discussion for this morning is all about what is the new normal in the Philippine educational system? Well, this is the most common question among parents, learners, and teachers since we are looking forward to the opening of classes. If you can recall last year, especially for the mothers, this time of the year is when we already prepare for the schooling of our children. Namimili na tayo ng mga gamit sa skwela, the bags, the uniforms, the shoes, the school supplies, and we are preparing to enroll our children. But now, parang wala na yung excitement na yun because uh, what we are preparing for is for the August opening of classes, which is quite far. Malayo pa siya. So, paano na nga ba ang nangyari? You are all surprised. It was March 17, 2020 when the entire Central Luzon was placed under enhanced community quarantine. It was that time when all classes were suspended. Then personnel were placed under a work from home status and uh, all activities were put into hold. Bigla na lang nahin to ang lahat. And until now, we do not know what will happen next. We are all fighting for our survival. We are all fighting this COVID-19 which we can see. And no one knows when we are going, when will be the time that we'll be able to go back to the normal life, to the normal way of living that we're used to. These are questions which nobody can answer as of now. But I know that one thing is for sure, the Department of Education is uh, committed in fulfilling its mandate, which is to provide quality, accessible, relevant, and liberating education for the Filipino youth amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Education will surely continue through the leadership of our dear secretary, Madam Yonor Magtolis Priones, with all the help and support of all the stakeholders. And to make learning continue this school year, there will be a big change in the setup of teaching and learning environment. Teachers and learners, school heads, parents, and other stakeholders would need to adapt to the new normal, which is very different from the old practice that we have in schools. The new normal in education is anchored on continuously delivering quality education while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners, teachers, and personnel in DepEd. Classes will be conducted in the context of the new normal in education. What is this new normal? How are we going to conduct classes for school year 2020-2021? Well, after consultations with different stakeholders, after internal discussions uh, with the authorities in the Department of Education, DepEd came out with Department Order Number 7, Series 2020, announcing that school opening is set on August 24, 2020 for all levels in the public schools, which can either be physically or virtually. Ibig sabihin, uh, sa opening ng klase, hindi kailangan na physically present ang mga bata. Ito ay depende sa lagay, sa sitwasyon ng ating mga paaralan ng uh, bawat lugar dito sa ating bansa. So the opening of classes is set on August but it can either be physically or virtually. 
and it will end on April 30, 2021. For all we know, the opening of classes is governed by a Republic Act. It's number 7797, which provides that it should be opening between the first Monday of June until the last day of August, unless otherwise it is amended. So by August, magbubukas ang ating mga klase at magbuumpisa ng mag-aral ang mga bata. Pero gaya ng sinabi ko, ito ay depende sa lagay na o sitwasyon sa bawat lugar. Mayroong mga pwede nang pumasok ang mga bata, pero meron ding lugar na hindi pa pinapayagang pumasok ang mga bata. Kaya may ibang pamamaraan tayo kung paano mag-aaral ang mga bata. Yun yung sinasabi natin na virtually. Kaya mamaya ay uh, tatalakayin natin yung iba't ibang pamamaraan kung paano natin may deliver ang uh, teaching sa ating mga kabataan sa panahon na ito. Now again, let me note, no face-to-face -face classes will be allowed earlier than August 24, 2020. And from August 24, face-to-face -face learning shall only be allowed when the local risk severity grading permits and subject to compliance with minimum health standards. Kaya nga, after August 24, Depende sa lagay, sa sitwasyon ng mga paaralan kung pwede nang payagan ang face-to-face. -face. Sana, sana panalangin natin na matapos na ang crisis na ito at makabalik na tayo sa normal nating pamumuhay. Well, as for private schools, SUCs, and LUCs offering basic education, they are enjoined to submit their plan for compliance with minimum health standards that will be issued by DepEd consistent with the guidelines of the DOH, the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, and the Office of the President. They are also enjoined to submit their learning continuity plan in accordance with the uh, guidelines to be issued by the Department of Education. Likewise, conduct of curricular and co-curricular activities involving gatherings, mass gatherings, such as science fairs, showcase of, uh, of portfolios, trade fairs, school sports, campus journalism, festival of talents, job fairs, and other similar activities, these are all canceled, except for those which can be conducted online. So, ipinagbabawal na po kasi under the guidelines sa IATF ang mass gatherings o yung pagtitipon-tipo ng maraming tao. Hindi na tayo po pwede ngayon na uh, uh, mag-conduct ng mga gatherings na kung saan nangangailangan ng pagtitipon-tipon uh, dahil pinapromote na nga natin ng social distancing or as much as possible, we all stay at home. Sabi nga, Depende yun sa lagay ng lugar. Uh, yung tinatawag nating local risk severity rating. So, depende. Now, ano naman ang sinasabi nating learning continuity plan? Bakit kailangan magkaroon ng learning continuity plan? Ano ang nakapaloob sa tinatawag nating learning continuity plan? Well, the Learning Continuity Plan embodies all the strategies, programs, and policies which we develop to provide guidance to the schools on how to deliver education in this time of crisis, while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all the learners, teachers, and personnel of DepEd. In this Learning Continuity Plan, it incorporates the new normal, the education setup. All efforts and initiatives to implement the LCP will greatly depend on family and community support. We need to prepare not only the schools, the learners, the administrators, 
the teaching and non-teaching personnel, but most importantly, the parents or the guardians of the learners. They will play a very important role in this learning community plan. Well, the learning community plan is governed by the following principles. It is anchored on the following principles. First, the learning continuity plan would like to protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel, and prevent further transmission of COVID-19. Next, it ensures that learning continuity through K-12 curriculum adjustments, alignment of learning materials, implementation of multiple learning delivery modalities, and provide corresponding teacher and parent or guardian training. Next is it wants to facilitate the safe return of teaching and non-teaching personnel and learners to work in schools. Based on the scenarios projected by the DOH, the IATF, complemented by other credible sources, and balanced by DepEd's own risk assessments. And also, the LCP would like to be sensitive in equity considerations and concerns and endeavor to address them the best that we can. And lastly, it also, it also is anchored on the link and bridge of the LCP to the DepEd's high vote to quality and into the future of education, which is under the framework of what we call Sulung Edukalidad, where it has the four pillars, the kite, and the future's thinking in education. So these are the basic principles wherein we would like to embody in the learning continuity plan. Now, the learning continuity plan has different components. Ano ba ang dapat naman ng learning continuity plan? So, the learning continuity plan, first and foremost, first and foremost is, before we start with the learning continuity plan, we have to assess. We have to assess the readiness of the school. We want to know how ready we are into introducing different learning modalities among our teachers, among our learners, among our parents. So as you can see, as of now, there are several surveys that we are uh, that are being floated in the field to assess how ready the school are uh, so that before we implement the LCP, we know what we have. And we know we know what our resources are and we know what are our needs so that we can decide better on what modalities we can employ in our schools for our LCP. Now, what are the key components? First and foremost is the streamlining of the K-12 curriculum to the most essential learning competencies, or what is now known as the MELCs. What are these MELCs? Most essential learning competencies. These are the most basic competencies that is needed to be taught to our learners. Ito yung dating mga priorities for this year. Before, it was about two years ago. Two years ago when they started streamlining the K-12 curriculum because of the findings that uh, it is said to be congested, it's said to be overlapping, napakarami daw, napaulit-ulit lang. Kaya they uh, review the curriculum and they try to streamline these competencies, combining one to the other. And then from about 14,171 competencies, it was streamlined, about 60% reduction, and now it is down to 5,689 competencies. This is where we will focus on this year. So teachers will be given copies of these mails so that they would know how to budget the year teaching the competencies in the mails. 
Next component of the learning continuity plan is the multiple learning delivery modalities uh, with blended learning and distance learning as major options. Multiple learning delivery modalities, like what we have said, several, several parts of the countries would not allow what we call the face-to-face -face, uh, type of learning, teaching and learning. Like, for example, in Bulacana, so now we are under the more, more modified enhanced community quarantine. So we are uh, encouraged to stay at home. Nobody knows what would be our uh, status this coming uh, August. If face-to-face -face will not be permitted as part of the learning modality, then we would have uh, to employ other modalities of the teaching and learning. And before we do that, for this component of the LCP, we need to assess the resources that we have so that we can decide on what learning modality to adopt. The reason why uh, we have floated several surveys to assess the status of our teachers and the learners for the teachers, we would like to assess if they are capable of what we call the distance learning. The same way with the students, which is also incorporated in their enrollment form that will be filled up as part of the enrollment process, which is also uh, to be given online. Uh, they need not go to the schools uh, to enroll, but it will be given to them. They will be filled up online so that uh, we would know who will be our students for next year. And it is the task of the class advisors. Last year, this is school year 2019-2020, they will be the one to do the enrolling of these uh, pupils or students. Uh, it is done online. It can also uh, be done through text, SMS. It can be through Messenger. It can be online, different online platforms. So it will be the task of the class advisor last year. And uh, they will, from this uh, readiness surveys, we would like to know if the teachers and the learners first, if they have the gadget, do they have the laptop, the desktop computers, do they have the phones, which they can use for online learning? Uh, do they have televisions? Do they have radios at home? Next, if they have, how many are using this? How many uh, are the members of the family using one cell phone? How many of the members of the family are sharing one laptop, one iPad? Next, do they have internet connectivity? Uh, we all know that uh, it is also varying signals. May mahina, may malakas. Uh, how many Mbps do they have? So we would like to know if they have internet connectivity or none at all. And also, we would like to know if they have radios, if they have televisions. Uh, kailangan malaman natin what are the available resources. For the schools, they should also have an inventory of the existing learning materials uh, so that when we uh, do modular approach, then they would have these uh, materials to be given to our students so readiness should first be assessed before deciding the modality to be adopted now as we move on let us uh, try to uh, take a glance on what are the different learning modalities to choose from like what i have said uh, in these times wherein we are under mecq or if you are under ecq gcq still Face-to-face -face, uh, learning modality is not yet acceptable because of the high risk being posted on our uh, teachers, learners, and personnel. Next, the, learn, uh, the second learning delivery modality is what we call the distance learning. Okay, how do we describe this distance learning? When we say distance learning, it takes place between the teacher and the learners who are geographically remote from each other during instruction. Magkalayo sila, hindi sila magkasama. Ang isang teacher ay nasa isang lugar at ang bata ay nasa ibang lugar. Hindi sila magkasama. Kaya siya distance learning. 
Pero under uh, under distance learning, there are several several types. Actually, we have here three. We have here three types of distance learning. First is what we call modular distance learning. What is modular distance learning? Well, it is a form of individualized instruction that allows students to use a self-contained package of learning activities. Learning modules are printed or non-printed materials that guide both teachers and learners through the content of the learning activities. From the word modular, the students will be bringing home modules, worksheets, workbooks, wherein they'll be the one to discuss, they will be the one to study themselves. The teacher is available to guide them. The teacher is available to give individualized instruction for the students, but the, the student alone will be working on it. So it is important that they have uh, elder brothers or sisters or the parents themselves to assist them in the, this modular uh, distance learning. But definitely the teacher will be around which can be contact, uh, contacted through online also. They can send them text messages if they have questions, if they have clarifications or PM, so still digital in nature. So they have also to employ online platforms so that they could discuss if there are clarifications to be made. But the main uh, material for this is that the student will be bringing home modules to answer at home. So the guidance of the parents is very, very important. Next is online distance learning. Online distance learning again, so as I have said before, so the DepEd has launched what we call an online study platform, which is what we call the DepEd Commons, which is very popular now. It is being subscribed by uh, students from public and private schools. It is also available for private schools, wherein they help learners access different lessons. So the Department of Education has uploaded different learning modules, different uh, lessons uh, in the Dep and Commons. These were prepared by uh, master teachers, uh, education program supervisors. It has uh, it was run, it was uh, fielded already, tested, validated, and uh, it was uploaded now into the DepEd Commons. So there are a lot of people accessing this DepEd Commons because this is very useful. This is user-friendly also. So pag nakita nyo siya, you will be, uh, you will be uh, enjoying answering worksheets in the DepEd Commons. Uh, you try to uh, view the DepEd Commons, so very accessible siya. And uh, another uh, news is that uh, if you are subscribing in the DepEd Commons, if you are using Globe Smart, it's for free. Wala pong bayad. Hindi po tayo uh, makakaltasan ng load natin kung tayo mag access sa DepEd Commons. Kaya uh, this is one way of uh, uh, encouraging everyone to access the DepEd Commons. Uh, marami po tayong matututunan dito. So this is one way of helping you know, online distance learning. And apart from that, from June, uh, while uh, our teachers are already reporting, it can be physically for those uh, places wherein it is uh, allowed, permitted, but for others na work from home, from June until the opening of classes, uh, the teachers are already preparing their instructional materials. Uh, the activities that they will be giving to students just is, uh, in case of online distance learning. So this is the time that they are doing these instructional materials for our learners. It can be video lessons uh, and all other uh, means of uh, instruction. Ito na po yung panahon na naggagawa na sila. So, from June, magpe-prepare na po sila ng pwede nila ibigay sa bata through online, through modules. So, next is what we call the radio-based instruction. Ano naman po yung radio-based instruction? 
It uses radio broadcasts to deliver ALS programs. Learners actively participate in audio lessons through the use of radio, particularly those students who are from far-flung areas not provided with electricity and internet connectivity. Ito po yung mga nasa malalayong lugar kung saan wala namang internet, uh, hindi pa siguro masyadong uso ang gadgets, uh, baka wala pang kuryente. Uh, actually, may mga lugar pa talaga tayo na walang kuryente. At ang kanilang uh, main source of uh, entertainment ang kanilang nagagamit na libangan karaniwan sa bahay ay radio. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng radio para sa ating pagtuturo. So, it will be broadcasted through radios. So, makikinig ang mga bata at dito marami silang matututunan. And lastly, for our distance learning is the use of television. Television learning. It uses television programs maybe in the form of individual television program or dedicated channels, especially that is often associated with cable television as channel providers. Television learning, uh, actually, uh, I heard in one of the teleconferences from uh, Congressman Vinga Chalian that he is eyeing the use of these government television stations uh, radio stations also as a means or a machinery for delivery of instruction. Uh, he emphasized uh, IBC-13 and PTB-4. Uh, if uh, the government would allow the use of this TV networks as machineries for delivering instruction to our children. Siguro halos lahat naman ng mga kabahayan ngayon ay may mga television. And actually, there are several programs now that are being used uh, to provide uh, information for our children. Kahit hindi pa naman na uh, wala pa tayong crisis na ganito, eh, talagang nagagamit na ang television para magturo sa mga bata. And this is the time that we will maximize the utilization of televisions as a means of instruction. Next is the third one. The third modality, actually. So we're done with face-to-face, -face, which is not permitted as of now. Next is the distance learning. Now we move on to the next, which is the blended learning. What is blended learning? Well, it requires gathering the class in person in a physical school and maintaining a supervised learning environment outside outside school via online platform. Combination of a face-to-face -face and distance learning. So may mga araw po na kailangan mag-report ng bata sa school at may mga araw din naman that they are going online, the use of online platform. So it is a combination of letter A and letter B. The class needs to report to school once in a while uh, and some other time, they will be having online classes. The reason why it's called blended learning. And the last one is what we call homeschooling. Um, abroad, this is very much uh, in the homeschooling. And also uh, private schools and uh, especially those students who are already working then they are uh, already into homeschooling even before but now uh, what is homeschooling actually it is the education of children at home or a variety of places other than the school hindi sa school nagaganap ang pag-aaral sa bahay o sa isang lugar na hindi paralan it is usually facilitated by qualified parents guardians or tutors who have undergone relevant training and subject to regulation. Hindi po basta uh, magulang, ikaw yung magulang ng bata ay pwede na pong homeschooling. I dimadaan din ni po ito sa uh, regulasyon. May mga requirements kung kailangan i-comply at may mga training na dapat atinan 
ang magulang para makapag-homeschooling. So, schools under our supervision are authorized to decide on the specific learning delivery modalities deemed appropriate in their context and consistent with the COVID-19 guidelines and regulations, they will all be preparing their own LCPs. Just like what I said, iba-iba po ng sitwasyon, iba-iba po ng konteksto ang mga paaralan, iba-iba po sila ng resources available, iba-iba po sila ng mga uh, mag-aaral, level ng mag-aaral. Uh, kaya hinahayaan po natin ang ating mga school heads na ang mga guro na magdesisyon mag, habang pinaprepare po nila ang learning continuity plan nila kung ano sa tingin nila ang mas appropriate para sa kanilang paaralan. Pero kailangan na uh, kapaloob pa rin po ito sa guidelines natin ng DepEd at ng COVID-19 guidelines and regulations as posted by the DOH. And uh, we really have great trust on our school heads. We know, we believe that the school heads and the teachers have the resilience, adaptability, and resourcefulness in delivering instruction. Kayang-kaya po ng ating mga guro, ng ating mga punong guro, kung paano nila magagawa, may sasakatuparan ang magaling na pagtuturo po para sa taong 2020-2021. Naniniwala po kami na makakagawa sila ng paraan para mas lalong maging magaling ang pagkatuturo ng kanilang mga mag -aaral. Now, for the third key element po ng ating LCP, ano pa ba ang laman ng ating LCP? Na una na ako ano yung mga competencies na kailangan nilang matutunan, na streamline na ang ating K-12 curriculum. Pangalawa, pinili na natin kung anong learning modality ang akma para sa kanilang paaralan. Pangatlo is kailangan natin ihanda ang mga guro at ang ating mga punong guro. Preparing teachers and school leaders for multiple learning delivery modalities. Bagamat nalaman na natin kung ano yung mga gadgets na meron sila, nakapili na tayo, but still, we all know that this year will be the first, the first year that we are having these different modalities. Uh, sanay na tayo ng mga nagdadaang taon na ang bata ay nakakaharap natin, face-to-face, ang ating pagtuturo. But this year, it's quite different. So we really need to prepare our teachers, our school heads in this new learning modalities. And how do we do that? Uh, kaya, sabi ko nga, we are conducting different surveys uh, on their readiness, the readiness of our teachers, the learners, and the school heads. We would like to know if they are already ready with the different uh, flexible learning options. Kailangan malaman natin if they're competent enough to operate the different learning platforms. Sanay ba silang gumamit ng mga online platforms? Sanay ba silang mag-Google Meet? Sanay ba silang mag Microsoft Teams? Marunong ba silang gumamit ng Messenger? Marunong ba silang mag-email? Meron ba silang Microsoft 365? So, nag-zoom ba sila? They, do they know how to operate gadgets? So, dapat alam natin, malaman natin kung ano yung need ng ating mga teachers and school heads to prepare them for the new normal in education. So, in preparing our teachers, in preparing our school leaders, so, we would like them to adopt, implement, and manage remote learning modalities as alternative or complementary delivery modality to face-to-face -face learning. Gusto natin na uh, maka-adjust sila sa bagong pamara pamamaraan ng pagtuturo. So when they start re uh, rendering service June 1, 2020, uh, upon completion of the summer vacation, which ends May 31, 2020, 
uh, they will start attending orientation and training activities on the utilization of distance learning uh, delivery modalities. They would be also attending trainings in preparation of different instructional materials because this will be online already. And they would also plan the organization of classes in consideration of the uh, learning delivery modality to be employed. Uh, Siyempre, iba ng schedule ng bata ngayon. Unlike sa face-to-face, -face, wherein we have different sections composed of about 40 to 50 students per class, and then may oras tayo, one hour per subject, four hours a week. Ibang-iba na ngayon. Definitely, if it will be done online, they have to plan when to have the children uh, going online, when do they, uh, when will they answer worksheets, uh, imo-monitor nila kung ano na yung nagiging uh, progress ng bata. So, they have to really plan for uh, the scheduling of the work activities of the students for this year. Now, for the personnel, if the skeleton workforce will still be the operative uh, government guidelines by June, pag skeleton workforce pa rin tayo by June, DepEd should issue the appropriate alternative work arrangement guidelines to the field to comply with the prevailing policy and to ensure safe work environment. So, alam naman natin na sa isang paaralan, hindi lamang guro, hindi lang na punong guro ang naririto. Kung hindi, meron din tayong mga non-teaching personnel. Those who are uh, working on the salaries of the teachers, doing the a clerical work, preparing reports. So, if this is a skeleton workforce, then uh, they have to follow the CSC circular on the alternative work arrangements. It can be a four-day work, uh, compressed work week. It can be staggered reporting. It can be skeleton workforce. It can be uh, the combination of any of this. It can also be shifting. Na may team A, team B. So there are several. It is included in the CNC uh, Memorandum Circular Number 10. So uh, there are a lot of uh, alternative work arrangements in there. So still, it should be in compliance with the uh, policies set by the DOH and the IATF and the Office of the President. Next is in the preparation, aside from the teachers, we, we also need to prepare our school leaders, the school heads, to implement and manage the remote learning system at the school and community level. So before monitoring of teachers is done face-to-face, -face, uh, the school heads can visit the classrooms to observe, to look into the teaching, uh, classroom uh, management, in everything as part of the monitoring and supervision of classes. But now if it is done online, then we also need to uh, capacitate our school leaders, our school heads, on how are they going to monitor progress of teachers and the learners. So they would also need training on the use of the different online platforms. And in the preparation, we should also improve readiness of household partners in supporting learners while on remote learning at home setting. Sabi ko nga, this will not be possible without the help of the parents, the guardians, the elder brothers and sisters, the lolos, the lolas, those who are with the children at home. Definitely, you should be with your children. Bantayan po natin sila, samahan natin sila sa kanilang pag-aaral while uh, they are at home. Tingnan po natin, gabayan natin. At yes, is natin. If there are things that they are asking about the lesson, we should be there for them to answer aside from the presence of the teacher also virtually. Virtually. So we, uh, we need to orient our parents that on the role that they are going to uh, perform in this school year 2020-2021. There should be orientation. There should also be training. Uh, for those who are interested online, they could uh, conduct, organize 
orientation training for our parents and for also for the community itself. Next, the fourth key element of our LCD. As I have said, meron na tayong streamlining ng K-12. We also have the different learning uh, delivery modalities. The third is the readiness of our teachers and the school leaders. The fourth one, anong dapat na laman ng LCT, the learning continuity plan? It should include the minimum health standards in schools and workplaces. As I have said, the LCT is prepared so that we can ensure the health, safety, and welfare of our teachers, the learners, the parents, the personnel, non-teaching personnel. So therefore, it should, it should show minimum health standards in schools and workplaces. The ultimate goal of DepEd is to facilitate the safe return of our teachers and learners to schools without worrying about COVID-19. Yung pagpasok nila, pagdating nila sa paaralan, alam nila na safe sila. Hindi na nga ba ang mga magulang na baka pagpunta ng bata ay pag uwi ay may sakit na. So we have to ensure them that we have prepared our school uh, for the coming of the students. These are for places where in allowed them face to face. Pero definitely, uh, school heads are visiting schools, the school personnel. Kaya for them, we have to set this minimum health standards. So what are these? So we have classified them into several uh, stages. No, ano yung iniwasan natin? Anong gusto nating mangyare? So first one is with. We would like to increase the physical and mental resilience of our school personnel as well as the learners, the teachers. We would like to increase physical and mental resilience. We know for a fact that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are all psychologically affected. It was a big surprise for us. It created confusion. It created anxiety especially for those who were who stopped from work definitely they are greatly affected by the covid-19 marami pong naapektuhan kaya we have to put them back bring back bring back their uh, physical mental psychological uh, health Tulungan natin sila na makabalik sa normal. So, how do we do this? So, physical, therefore, uh, schools are not, uh, are doing, are creating programs for uh, increasing physical resilience of teachers and learners. At una na rito, yung programa na taon-taon naman ay meron ang ating DepEd. It is what we call the school-based feeding program. This is intended for undernourished students. This is being done before 100 days. 100 days where, wherein the students are being fed in schools, either lunch, merienda. So they are given funds for this. So dalawang funding ng school feeding program. One is coming from uh, the program itself, na school-based feeding program. And the other one is an addition, which is coming from the canteen fund. So in the last uh, how many years it is being implemented in DepEd. But for now, this 2020, 2021, they are finding ways on how they can continue the school-based feeding program. Uh, before the COVID-19, it was already planned that they'll be giving meals to these undernourished uh, students. Plus, they're also planning to give milk ibabalik ang pagbibigay ng gatas sa mga bata because we know that milk is very important for a growing child. Kaya ibinabalik ang pagbibigay ng milk. So they're looking for ways on how they can deliver this to the students. Next is health education and nutrition advocacy and instruction. So advocacy campaigns on uh, how to prevent COVID-19, how to keep our body healthy so that we can fight the virus. 
and uh, also information dissemination on what is uh, the best nutrition for the children. Mental health interventions. So ito yung sinasabi ko na we uh, should provide uh, mental mental health no, for our teachers and learners and the uh, personnel. So how do we do this mental health interventions? So we have trained nurses in DepEd. Uh, marami po tayong nurse, especially in Bulacan. We, had, uh, we have a lot of nurses who have undergone training on psychosocial interventions. So this will, they will be utilized, uh, assigned in different schools to provide orientations, to provide psycholo psychosocial interventions, especially for those who are affected by COVID-19. Then there are also... We are also giving vitamins and mineral supplements, especially vitamin C for our teachers and learners. And we'll be su uh, providing support for our teachers and personnel who are in need during these times of uh, the time of pandemic. Next is, you would like to reduce transmission. Reduce transmission is uh, done in many ways. First is the school readiness standards. So we have to uh, provide policies, policies uh, for school readiness. So kailangan prepared yung school natin. Uh, kailangan meron tayong sapat na area to accommodate our students. Uh, meron tayong lugar na uh, allotted for school clinic, meron tayong mga respiratory and hand hygiene or washing schools, meron tayong mga hand washing facility kung saan pwedeng maghugas ang bata ng kamay every now and then. It is advised that every two or three hours, uh, we have to wash our hands. The schools will be providing soap, uh, syempre, unlimited supply of water for this uh, hand washing. And then they will be also using face mask, face shield. Kailangan uh, may provide natin ito uh, para sa ating mga sujante, sa guru at sa mga personnel. Then there will be regular disinfection of school facilities, close monitoring by teachers. If there are students who are uh, manifesting symptoms, like for example, may inuubo, may sinisipon, may nilalagnat, may nanghihina ang katawan, may roong uh, uh, nararamdaman din nila na sila ay may roong karamdam, uh, sakit, di ba? So there should be close monitoring of teachers. So kailangan they will not be allowed to come to school na so that we can reduce transmission. Uh, we, will, we should be aware if there are students exhibiting these uh, symptoms. And from that, kailangan may social distancing. Uh, kailangan they are employing health and safety standards, uh, not only in school, but it should be also observed at home and in travel. Siyempre, kahit na ganun tayo kaingat sa paaralan, if they are not doing this at home, Kaya nga importante yung orientation ng parents on the new normal so that uh, what we are uh, doing in school should also be done at home para may continuity, para sigurado tayo ma-ensure natin yung safety and uh, welfare ng ating mga mag-aaral. So it should be done not only in school but also at home and also in travel. Then, next is... After reducing transmission, we should also reduce contact para mawala, para walang transmission, di ba? Para walang transmission, there should be no contact or reduced contact. And how do we do this? This time, syempre ang most popular na social distancing, uh, physical distancing at work, classrooms, and travel. So if you can see at news, sa mga balita, sa TV, makikita natin yung nakapropose na mga social distancing measures sa mga PUVs, yung mga public utility vehicle. Di ba? Nakikita natin may mga divide na mga plastics. And also sa classroom, 
uh, we have to reduce class size. If ever, time will come na papayagan na yung face-to-face, -face, uh, there will be a social distancing also inside the classroom. So it is advised that we should only have about 15 to 20 students per class. So armchairs will be uh, arranged apart from one another. It should be about 1, 1.5, 2 meters apart, depending on the size of the classroom. Because we know that we have different models, different designs of classrooms. There are uh, classrooms that are that is measuring 6 by 8, 7 by 8, 7 by 9, depending on the size. So that will uh, determine how many students will be accommodated in that classroom, given the distance required. So there should also be to reduce contact in pinag-usapan natin na multiple learning delivery modalities. So distance learning. Alternative work arrangements. So under GCQ, you will be allowed to have about maximum of 75%. So ilan na yung mga papasok sa mga offices. So may mga requirement ng uh, reporting to work. So ilan lang yung pwedeng papasukin. So that is under alternative work arrangement. So that is the one that I have discussed already to you, which is an issue once by the CSC. Now the CSC Memorandum Circular Number 10. It was enumerated there. Then ventilation of classrooms. So we should have uh, windows, open windows, so that air can uh, come in and out freely. Para medyo hindi na ista ang air sa loob ng kwarto. And then cancelled all activities involving large congregation of learners. So it also come, uh, come side by side by this, uh, with social distancing, reduced class size, and uh, the cancellation of uh, extracurricular curricular activities involving uh, large congregations. So next is reduced duration of infection. If there will be cases, so there should be testing protocol. Partner LCP natin, if there will be cases, there should be testing protocols. Then internal contact tracing. Sino yung mga nakasalumuha just in case magkaroon tayo ng case. Availability of PPEs for emergency situations and for management of quarantine facilities and for agreed referral system for symptomatic patients. So yun yung mga ibibigay nating assistance just in case na meron tayong magiging case. And that would reduce duration of infection if they will be properly assisted. And still, uh, we will continue with our DepEd Task Force COVID-19, communication plans, and internal situation reports. Because we are monitoring, we are continuously monitoring the different cases, no? different uh, cases of COVID in the different localities within the province. So. We from the DEP and the SDO Bulacan are monitoring cases uh, as reported as reported by our provincial uh, health office. So we know how many are the cases in the different localities, especially if it involves teachers and learners. So we will continue with that. Next from among the key elements is supposedly the one that is uh, that should be happening now it is what we call the brigada escuela the very uh, uh known program of the department of education it is uh, done nationwide brigada escuela oplan balik escuela on how uh, we look into our learners how we look into the learners who are not yet enrolling and then uh, also partnerships during the month of may so this time, for school year 2020-2021, Brigada Escuela and Online Balik Escuela is scheduled from June 1st up to August 29, 2020. Ano ang meron sa Brigada Escuela? You know, I am very much of, uh, very much fond of attending Brigada Escuela because I would like to help 
also in the preparation for the going back to school of our students. When I was a school principal, I really make it a point that I am uh, part of the sweeping of the field, the uh, grounds. I am doing uh, a little painting. I'm trying. And I, I want to be a uh, part of the activities that we have planned under Brigada Escuela. So this time, it's quite different. But still, uh, the traditional way of doing the Brigada Escuela is the cleaning, the painting, beautification, uh, soliciting donations for bags, for school supplies. Still, it's a uh, part, but it has uh, some reconfiguration that has been done for the Brigada Escuela so that it will be responsive to the uh, implementation of the learning continuity plan addressing COVID-19 pandemic. So there will be partnership activities and collaboration uh, that should be undertaken for the implementation of the LCP. So the Brigada Escuela, uh, under the new normal, should ensure that the learning is continued while uh, being responsive to the global pandemic. There are several suggested partnership engagement uh, activities under the Brigada Escuela. So this is the reconfigured. So we would like to include the following activities. So take note of this so that it will be part of the plan for the upcoming Brigada Escuela. Although uh, we all know that Brigada Escuela, uh, the ADAPT School, is a year-round activity. Hindi lang naman talaga siya from the, during the past is the month of May. But it is a year-round activity. Continuously, we are open for donations, for support from our stakeholders. Year-round yan, hindi natatapos. Hindi tayo tumatanggi. Laging open arms na tinatanggap natin ng tulong from our community. Uh, we just want to celebrate it actually during these months. No, month of May before, but this time it is from June to August. So what are the uh, proposed suggest, uh, suggested partnership uh, activities? First is disinfection of schools. Siyempre, uh, yung disinfection of schools, it's not a one-time uh, activity. Regular natin gaganapin ang disinfection of schools. So kailangan natin ang suporta ng ating mga stakeholders. So that we can uh, regularly do the disinfection. Mobilization of essential items. Ano mga essential items to na kailangan nating uh, uh, masolicit so that we could regularly support our teachers and learners with this. So dapat meron tayo laging thermal scanners in school, hand sanitizing uh, equipment, hand sanitizing materials. We should have cleaning tools, disposable surgical face masks. Kailangan lagi tayo meron ito. Face shields, meron tayong gloves, meron tayong multivitamins, meron tayong alcohol, uh, meron tayo also na importante din yung mga materials natin on COVID-19 so that uh, information dissemination uh, would be done. Siyempre, iba na yung may alam, sabi nga nila. Kailangan very much informed tayo so that uh, we will not be bothered by fake news, di ba? Marami kasing biglang may balita na lang. So if you're not knowledgeable on this, then you can easily believe. So importante, we should have this advocacy campaigns. We should have this uh, information drive so we could uh, distribute flyers so that I will, uh, our teachers, learners, and parents will be educated on COVID-19. Next is we should also conduct psychological first aid sessions psychosocial interventions so we need partnership with this so as i have said for those uh, we are very uh, much affected by the pandemic so aside from physical uh, preparations in school we should also have uh, this psychosocial psychological interventions orientation activities with partners and pta on DepEd. LCP. So this learning continuity plan should be well disseminated to the field, to the community, because we can't do it alone. Hindi pwedeng teacher, learner, school head lang ang nakakaalam ng LCP. 
it should be a partnership between the school and the community, the parents, because they will they will be the one to extend support so that all the learning modalities that we will decide on will be effective because they are the ones with their children. Then distance learning, there should also be provision of internet modem, routers, gadgets, laptops, desktop computers, cell phones. So we need, we need support. We need stakeholders to support us with this equipment. So we need donations for this. Aside from that, we also need partners to train our teachers on the use of technology for distance education. And not only the teachers, not only the learners, again, I have said the parents should also be trained on their new role in relation to distance learning. At syempre pa, hindi nawawala ang gulayan sa paaralan at hindi lang sa paaralan, pati na rin sa tahanan. So, sabi nga, ang gulay ay pampalakas ng katawan. We should learn to eat vegetables. And uh, schools, we have uh, open field there. We have to utilize them so that uh, kung naman ang harvest natin, it, could, uh, we, it can be of help to our students. Yung mga nangangailangan na nutrition, the undernourished one, we can support them with the harvest from our kulayan. And also encourage parents to plant vegetables in their backyards. Then there are several other school-based initiatives depending on the context and partners' appreciation. So these are the different uh, activities suggested for the Brigada Escuela this uh, coming June to August 2020. So, huwag po natin kakalimutang suportahan ang ating mga paaralan sa Brigada Eskwela. So, hindi naman kailangan physically present din. Ang mga bagay na ito ay hindi naman uh, nangangailangan ng uh, pagpunta sa paaralan kung hindi maaari natin itong uh, ibigay sa pamamagitan ng iba't ibang pamamaraan. Kailangan po na inyong suporta ng ating mga paaralan. Then the sixth key element. Finance, procurement, and delivery. Definitely with the new normal, there will be a change in the priority spending of DepEd. Since the health and safety of our teachers, learners, and school personnel will be given priority. Siyempre, hindi natin alam na may dadating na ganito. Our plans are being prepared as early as the last quarter of last year and started implementation last January. But again, the crisis came. So there will be changes in our priorities. So preventive measures will be put in place under the new normal. The AIP or the annual implementation plan, our annual procurement plan, uh, there will be revisions to that so that we can align our priority spending with the needs uh, of the present times sa ating new normal. So there will be adjustments also in the different processes of procurement because face-to-face -face is not anymore allowed. So most of the processes will be done online and uh, we have to adapt. We have to adapt to the needs of our schools of our offices. So the last one is monitoring, evaluation, and adjustments. As I have said, again, face-to-face -face interaction is not anymore allowed uh, in these uh, times of quarantine. There will be changes in the methods and strategies of conducting monitoring and evaluation. Several tools are now being prepared. They are being crafted, which can be used online so that we can track progress, accomplishments of activities in the field, uh, especially of those uh, for our learners and the teachers. So to, uh, tools are being prepared so that we can track whatever is being done in the field. 
So, hindi na natin sila pwedeng bantayan ng face-to-face. Kaya, syempre, school leaders or those under the performing the responsibility of uh, monitoring and evaluation should be adept in the use of this uh, digital technology so that they could uh, perform their job very well. So, again, uh, hindi natin alam kung kailan matatapos ang crisis ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya we must be ready, we must be open-minded, and we must be very optimistic that these days shall pass. Malalagpasan din po natin ito. Alam natin na babalik po tayo sa normal. Diyan po magaling ang mga Pilipino. Alam natin na wala tayong problema na hindi natin kaya lagpasan. At alam po sa pananamat pananampalataya natin sa poong may kapal, lagi siyang nandyan, and God knows what's best for us. And again, let me reiterate that DepEd will not stop in its pursuit of uh, different modalities to deliver basic education despite the crisis that we are experiencing. Although transition is quite hard, there will surely be birth pains. Nanganganig po tayo, bagong-bago po ito para sa atin. But with the help and support of all the stakeholders, kayo po ang magiging katuwang ng DepEd. At alam ko, we will surely win this battle. Kaya sama-sama po tayo sa Department of Education, Simula po sa central office hanggang sa mga paaralan, tulong-tulong po tayo upang maihatid ang dekalidad na edukasyon para sa ating mga mag-aaral. Maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood.